Kyrian just texted me to tell me that you've gone into labor? How could you do that whilst I'm not there? I told you not to have the baby this weekend because I was away, and you've gone and done exactly the opposite of what I said. I bet you've done it on purpose, haven't you? Simply because you don't like me. How selfish of you. I will definitely be having words with Kyrian about this. You can't just go and do whatever you want, especially when I've told you not to do something. Beth? Are you going to answer me, or are you just going to ignore me like a petulant child when they've been told off? Hello? Mom, it's Kieran. We really don't have time for your dramatics right now. Stop trying to make everything about you. This is mine, Beth's, and our baby's time now. Oh, and do you know how ridiculous you sound right now? Beth hasn't decided to have the baby simply because you're not here. It doesn't work like that, and you know it doesn't. Stop trying to cause an argument, especially with my wife who has just gone into labor. She has enough to stress about at the minute. She doesn't need you adding to it. I'll message you sometime later. For now, just leave me and Beth alone to get through this. Now, goodbye. Well, how rude. I was just explaining how I was disappointed that I wouldn't be able to be at the birth of my grandchild. No need to get so snappy with me. Kyrian? Fine, be like that. See if I care. Just know that you won't be getting any presents or anything from me for this baby. Not after how you've treated me. Now don't bother messaging me. I mean it. I won't answer. Got it? Kyrian, why didn't you message me to tell me your baby has been born? I had to find out through a post on Facebook? What's that about? I'm your mother. Um, you told me not to bother messaging you last night because you wouldn't answer? You know, when you were throwing that huge tantrum simply because Beth went into labor and you weren't here to come to the hospital. Well, you still should have texted me. Whether I responded or not doesn't matter. It's only courteous to tell your mom that her grandchild has been born. What was the baby anyway? Do you mean, was it a boy or a girl? Yes, of course. What was it? She's a little girl and we've decided to name her Aurora. Oh, what a stupid name. That child will be cursing you for the rest of her life because of the name you gave her. Why not give her a proper name? Something like Laura, Margaret, or even Joan. You want us to name our daughter after you? Well, why not? Fathers name their sons after them all the time. Why can't I have a little baby Joan? Um, because she isn't your baby? She's mine and Beth's. So we're allowed to name her what we like, and for the record, everyone we've talked to has said that they love her name and that it makes her sound like a little princess. Well, of course they'd say that. They're just as dumb and idiotic as you and that wife of yours. Oh well. I guess it can't be helped though. So I'll be around in about two hours to see my granddaughter. Make sure the house is tidy and ready for me. Whoa, 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 hold up. We haven't even left the hospital yet, so you won't be going anywhere. Besides, me and Beth have decided that we want a few days of peace and quiet to just spend them being a little family and bonding with our new daughter. When we're ready for visitors, we'll let people know, but that won't be for at least a few days first. So, not only did Beth go into labor when I specifically told her not to, but now she's refusing me my right to see my grandchild? You don't have any right to my baby whatsoever. And if you want to play any part in her life at all, then you better start working on your attitude because I won't have you coming around and acting like this in front of my daughter. Honestly, you're acting like a five-year-old. I'm not the problem. You and Beth are. You're acting all high and mighty just because you've had a baby. Newsflash, you're not the first people to have a child, and you certainly won't be the last. It's nothing special. So why you and your wife have decided that you're too good to let people come and see the baby until you deign it okay is beyond me. Honestly, if you don't let me see her today, then don't expect me to come over when you beckon me to. Fine, don't bother coming around at all then. You're the only one who's going to miss out. Me and Beth are more than happy putting all of our time, effort, and love into Aurora, whether you're there or not. Ugh, your generation is so disrespectful nowadays. Whatever happened to listening and respecting your elders? You get respect when you show people respect. 
You can't just go around demanding it and then treating people like rubbish because they haven't done what you said or let you get your way. It doesn't work like that. Fine then. I'll wait until you let me know when I can come and see my granddaughter. But you better not make me wait too long. You will wait until me and Beth are ready to have visitors. Being first time parents isn't going to be easy and... We want to try and establish a routine before anyone comes over to see us. It'll just make things much easier for us. Fine, fine. Well, I suppose I'll have plenty of time with the baby in a couple of months when Beth goes back to work. You'll need a babysitter. And as I'm the child's grandmother, I'm obviously the one who will look after her. Actually, we'll be fine for a little while. Me and Beth have been saving up since we knew we were going to have a baby and... We've actually got quite a nice little nest egg. It's enough that Beth won't have to go back to work for quite a while anyway. At least six months. Well, you'll need me eventually. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going now. Beth is waking up and I want to spend time with my wife and our baby. Not arguing with you. Fine. I won't bother you again. Jeez, talk about an ungrateful and selfish son. Seriously, Joan? What is wrong with you? Why did you do that? What? You know what. You purposely called attention to me whilst I was feeding Aurora today. So much so that I had to leave and go into some horrible, filthy toilets just to finish feeding her. Well, you shouldn't have been breastfeeding her in the middle of the park. People go there for a nice, family-friendly walk, not to be flashed by some tart on a park bench. It's not right for a woman to just suddenly stop and pull her top down in front of everyone. First of all, I can feed my baby wherever I like, whenever she gets hungry. And secondly, there should be no shame in feeding my baby, especially considering I even had a blanket covering her head, so absolutely nothing could be seen. The only reason anyone began to have a problem with it is because you decided to practically shout it out to the whole park what I was doing. No one would have cared otherwise. Because of you, I had to go to a filthy public toilet, sit on the loo, which had no lid, and balance as I tried to finish feeding my daughter. It was unsanitary and just unpleasant, and there was no need for that to happen at all. You shouldn't even be breastfeeding her. Bottles are much better and easier. I'll feed my daughter how I like, thank you very much. And if you think that you're going to be coming out with me and Aurora again anytime soon, you are sadly mistaken. What? You can't do that. I am her grandmother. I'm allowed to see my granddaughter whenever I want to. No. You can see her when I or Kieran say you can. She's our daughter, so we decided who she sees and who she doesn't. With how you've behaved these last couple of weeks, you're now on the list of people we don't want interacting with our baby. Not until you sort out your behavior. You are the worst thing to happen to my family. I hope you know. Kieran listened to me before you came along. He would do whatever I said, whenever I said it. Now all he does is argue with me and talk back to me. And it's all your fault. In fact, with how you two behave, you don't deserve to raise a child. She's just going to end up as spoiled, disrespectful, and horrible as you are. As long as she doesn't turn out like you, I'll be happy. How dare you? Whatever, Joan. I'm done talking to you now. Aurora is waking up from her nap and she'll want to feed again soon. So I'm going to go and spend time with my daughter. I don't have the time nor the patience to deal with you right now. You make it sound like I'm some sort of chore. Well, with how you're acting lately, you are. I'll have you know I'm extremely pleasant and lots of people like me. Great. Go spend time with them and leave me alone. I honestly wish you weren't my daughter-in-law. And I wish you weren't my mother-in-law. But seeing as I love Kieran, that's not going to change anytime soon. Just so you know, your baby hasn't got a chance if she's got you for a mother. She deserves someone much better to raise her. I love my daughter and I will be the best mother I can be for her. Will I make mistakes? Yeah, probably. But I'm still learning myself. It doesn't mean I'm a bad mom, especially if I learn from what I do wrong and make sure to fix anything that needs fixing. Oh, please. You can stop with that righteous rubbish. It's only a way to stop yourself feeling so guilty about being a terrible mother. It doesn't actually mean anything. If that's what you want to think, then so be it. But I know what's right and what's not. 
Ugh, I'm going to have to go because everything you're saying is literally making me feel ill. It's so preachy and lovey-dovey, it's completely stupid. Although, coming from you, it's not that surprising. Goodbye, Joan. You're not welcome around my house for the time being, so please don't come round. You'll just be turned away. We'll see about that. Kieran? Kieran, you need to come home right now. Beth? What's wrong? Your mom has broken into our house whilst I was having a nap and has tried to kidnap our daughter. What? Is she okay? Who? Aurora or your mom? Because if it's your mom, she's about to be as not okay as she could possibly be. No, Aurora. Is she okay? Does my mom have her or is she with you? Luckily, her crying woke me up as your mom was trying to pick her up. I was able to grab Aurora and she's not left my arms since. But your mother is still here and she's ranting like a crazy woman. I seriously need you to come and do something about her, as she's scaring both me and our daughter. Wait right there, I'll be home as quickly as I can. Mom, what the hell do you think you're doing? Kieran, what do you mean? Don't. I know you literally just tried to kidnap my daughter. You're terrifying my wife and you're acting like a crazy person. What the hell is wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm trying to do what's right for my granddaughter. You tried to kidnap my daughter. You are literally acting like a crazy person. What? No, I'm not. I just know that if she's left in the care of you and Beth, little Joan isn't going to be brought up properly. She's going to be spoiled and disrespectful and a horrible little girl. However, if I raise her, she'll be lovely and sweet and caring, just like me. Little Joan? Her name is Aurora. Jeez, that's it. I think you've actually lost your mind. No, I haven't. Just stop being so disrespectful to me. You used to listen to me and do what I said. So, if you truly love me, you'll let me take your daughter to raise her the right way. No. Huh? What do you mean, no? You're not having her. You're not ever going to see her again or have anything to do with her. I'm fed up with this disgusting behavior of yours. Both me and Beth have told you to sort out how you've been acting if you wanted any hope of being involved in our daughter's life. But you've completely ignored what we said and you've gone in some crazy tantrum where you've decided that kidnapping my daughter is okay. I'm not having it. If you don't get out of my house and away from my family right now, I'll call the police and have you arrested for attempted kidnapping, trespassing, or whatever else I can think of. I'll also be getting a restraining order against you for all of my family. We don't want anything to do with you. You've had your chances, <laughs> you've blown them. There's nothing left to do now but remove you completely from our lives. But I'm your mother. No, you're just a crazy woman who won't stop harassing my family. You gave up your right to call yourself my mother when you didn't respect or listen to me when I tried to set boundaries for myself and my family. Well, can you blame me? Beth is a terrible mother. Your baby won't be raised properly. I can help. I raised you, didn't I? And I'm just amazed and grateful that I didn't turn out crazy like you. I'm not crazy. I'm pretty sure breaking and entering into someone's home just to steal their child is a pretty insane thing to do. Don't you think so? No. Uh-huh, sure, that sounded convincing. But it's not fair. I want a daughter to raise. You shouldn't get to have one whilst I don't. So, you're basically saying that you wish you'd never had me and that you wanted a daughter instead? Wow, thanks for that, Mom. No, that's not what I meant. I just wish I could have had a daughter as well. And, well, now that you've had a daughter, I just thought that I could raise her, you know? You could finally get rid of that horrible wife of yours and we could go back to being a happy family together. Me, you, and little Joan. You would listen to me again, like you used to, when we would all be happy. Okay, that is so messed up in so many ways. Plus, it's never going to happen. I love Beth and there's no way I'm just going to leave her simply because you've decided that you don't like her. 
What's more, e even if me and Beth split up, there's no way I just let you raise my daughter. She's still my daughter and I'm still more than capable to raise her properly on my own. Luckily, I won't have to find out how to do it alone because I have Beth and we're more than happy to raise our daughter together. We love one another and our little girl and nothing is going to tear our little family apart. Especially not you. You make me seem like the most horrible person alive. I'm not that bad. You and Beth are the ones pushing me to act like this. If you would just let me spend time with my granddaughter how I like whenever I want to, then we wouldn't be having these problems. For the last time, she's our daughter, not yours. You don't get any say in what goes on in her life. And I think, until you learn that, it would be better if you just stayed away from me and my family permanently. You can't do that, Kieran. Yes, I can, actually. And just so you know, I'm almost back home, so if you haven't left by the time I get there, I will follow through on my threat and call the police. Fine, I'm going. Don't expect me to ever help you out again. Sounds good to me. You've been more of a hindrance than a help anyway, so by you leaving, we'll have one less problem to deal with and a whole lot of stress removed. Ugh, you're supposed to be upset that I'm going. I'm the one who asked you to go. If I go now, just know, I won't be coming back ever. This will be the last message you ever see or hear from me. Do you really want that? If it means keeping my family safe because you can't just act like a normal person, then it's just a consequence I'll have to live with. In the end, you're the one choosing to leave my life, not the other way around. You've made this situation yourself. No one else has forced you to be so horrible and impossible to be around. That's all you. So you're seriously okay with letting your own mother go off into the world alone where anything can happen to her? You're a grown woman. I'm sure you can handle yourself just fine. Fine then. I'm going. I hope you and your stupid wife are happy now. Not really. I'm sad that my own mom can't be civil enough to be a part of my life. I thought you were better than what you've been doing. Oh well, I guess even those you think you know can surprise you. Anyway, I'm home now, so I hope you aren't here when I walk through the front door. Don't worry, I won't be. Goodbye then, Mom. I hope you have a nice life. Whatever. I hope yours is terrible. Classy. Goodbye. Bye. After my mom's crazy kidnapping attempt, I did get a restraining order against her, just in case, for all my family. However, true to her word, I have not seen or heard from her since that day. Even though I'm sad that she's not in my life anymore, the woman who raised me seems to have disappeared and been replaced by someone who is selfish, narcissistic, and horrible. And I'm glad not to have to deal with someone like that anymore. Since my mom left, life has gotten much easier for me, Beth, and our little girl. We're much calmer and much more happy now as a family. We spend as much time as possible together and me and Beth are enjoying every moment of being new parents and we're even discussing possibly having a second child, although that might be a little ways off yet. Either way though, I can't wait. Carla, where's my makeup? I swear mom told you to buy me that list of stuff I left you. So the fact that you haven't gone and got it really just shows how stupid you actually are. I mean. I was right there when mom told you to make sure you got my makeup from the shops because I need it for my photo shoot. There's no excuse for you to not have done it. Actually, there is. I've been really busy at work and I literally have only just got back from a grueling 10 hour shift. I also have to be up and at my second job in around four hours. So I really don't have time to do any chores for you at all. Like I said, you have no excuse. Just because you're tired doesn't mean that you can skip out on your chores. I need that makeup, so that means you have to go and get it. How could you needing makeup be more important than me getting a little bit of sleep before I have to go and get ready for my second job? I work incredibly hard every day to earn a little bit of money, and all I ask is to be able to catch a couple of hours of sleep before moving on to my next job. I don't want to be made to go and get some trivial thing that you want. If you want something, then you need to go and get it yourself. 
Yeah, but that's nothing compared to what I'm going to be doing. I need the perfect makeup tonight so that I can look my best and hottest to impress the guys at the club. I'm going out with my girlfriends tonight, and I really need to be the best looking one there. I especially want to be Tanya. She really annoyed me last week, so I need to upstage her a little bit. So, tell me, how can a silly little bit of sleep be more important than me looking the best I possibly can? This is a really fun evening I've got planned tonight, so you need to stop whatever stupid thing it is that you are doing and go and get my makeup. Make sure you get the peach lipstick and the right colored foundation. It needs to really match my skin tone. It can't be even a shade lighter, otherwise I'll make you take it back. The rest of the stuff is on the list. And be quick! I'm almost finished with my outfit and I don't want to be waiting around forever for my makeup. Oh, and also, whilst you're at it, I need you to do my ironing and clean my room whilst I'm gone. What? Why do you suddenly need me to clean your room? Well, duh, it's dirty. That's why you need to clean it. What? Well, when people simply live, they always create a lot of mess. You know, dirty laundry, old cups and plates and stuff. Not to mention the fact that there's a bunch of other stuff in there cluttering the space up and also something really smells. So you're not only going to have to tidy everything up for me, but you're going to need to do a full detox of the room. I mean, Hoover, bleach any mold, scrub the carpets of stains, stuff like that. But that's ridiculous. Drew, there's no way that I have time to do all of that. I mean, cleaning your room to that extent will literally take hours. That's time that I don't have because I need to be at work soon. Well, that's too bad. You need to clean my room first. Cleaning my room is your first priority. So if you don't get it done, then you can't go to work. That's so stupid. As if I'm going to miss work just to clean your room. I mean, I could lose my job if I do that. Or at least get written up for being late. It's not going to happen. Besides, you made the mess in your room so you can clean it up. No, I don't want to do that. I hate tidying, so I'm not going to. Anyway, mom said that if you were going to live with us, then you needed to do all the household chores, which includes cleaning my room. No, it doesn't. I agreed to help out around the house and do the tidying in the main rooms, like the kitchen and the living room and stuff, but I never agreed to clean your room. That wasn't a part of the deal. Well, the deal's changed. If you want to stay in this house, then you need to earn your keep, which includes tidying my room and doing pretty much whatever I tell you to. LOL. I have important things to do, Drew. I'm not going to waste my time cleaning your pigsty of a room when you're the one who messed it up in the first place. You're just going to have to deal with it. Look, you just need to face the facts that I am helping you out here. Oh yeah? And how are you doing that? Well, with your skill set and your looks, you're really not going to amount to much. Practicing to be a maid is really the best you can hope for. I'm just giving you the training so that you can get a job. Hang on. How can you say that? I am incredibly smart, so I know that I can actually do something with my life. Plus, what do you mean I don't have the looks for it? I think I look perfectly fine. Look, why are you getting so upset? It's only the truth. You weren't blessed with the same good looks that I was. I mean, just look at the jobs that you do. Bartending and janitor work at that college. They're pathetic jobs for a pathetic person. It's the only thing you could do. Because of your less than stellar looks, you just have to use manual labor to get by in life. So, it was like you were destined to be a maid, lol. Whereas, I can get anything I want with just a click of my fingers, simply because of how beautiful I am. You really think a lot of yourself, don't you? Why shouldn't I? I'm pretty and I know it. There's nothing wrong with that. You're clearly just jealous that I'm better looking than you, and so I can get by in life easier than you. I mean, who needs hard work when you've got beauty? Well, you know what they say. Beauty is fleeting. Not mine. I'll just get whatever work I need to get done as the years go by to maintain my youthful appearance. And how will you afford that then? Plastic surgery isn't cheap, you know. Well, duh. I know that. But I don't need to worry because by that point, I'll be rich and famous, so I'll be able to afford all the surgeries and special treatments I need in order to remain looking young. You can't be serious. Um, of course I am. So hurry up and get what I need already. 
I'm just not going to listen to you anymore. I've got work to focus on and I am not going to be your personal maid or whatever. If you want stuff for tonight, then you need to go and get it yourself. As for your room, well, you're a grown woman, so I think you can handle cleaning up your own mess, don't you? Well, I don't want to clean it up. And if you don't do what I tell you to, then I'll tell mom on you. Jeez, what are you, nine? You're really going to tell mom on me simply because I won't go to the shop for you? Which is something that you are completely capable of doing by yourself, by the way. Yes, I will tell her and she will be super mad at you because she told you to go and get my stuff and you haven't. I can't deal with you right now, Drew. I need to get my sleep and you're not helping. So I'm going to have my nap before I have to get up to work again, unlike you. Fine, if that's how you're going to act, don't say I didn't warn you. Carla, how dare you act like that to your sister? Carla! Mom, what's up? I was just having a quick nap before I went to work. Is everything okay? If your sister tells you to do something, then you need to do it. She told you to go to the shop for her, and yet you haven't. It's ridiculous. You can't just ignore me or your sister when we tell you to do something, you know. If you want to live in my house, then you need to follow my rules, and rule number one is that you always do what you are told, understand? Oh my god. I can't believe Drew actually told on me to you. How childish can she get? It's not childish. She told me what you were doing because you wouldn't listen to her. So naturally, the next step is to come to me so that I can get you to do what you're told. As your mother, you have to listen to me. Not when what you're asking of me is completely ridiculous, I don't. What? Of course you do. I'm your mother. That means I naturally have control over you. Um, no one has control over me. I'm a 21-year-old woman who has been taking care of herself for years now. I have two jobs that I work for my income, and I am more than old enough to make decisions on my own, and one of those decisions is whether or not I listen to you when you're going on about ridiculous things. Me not going to the shop during some of the only free time I actually have really shouldn't have been made into this massive farce that it has. I mean, I do pretty much all of the chores around the house, and Drew does nothing. Do you know how tiring it is to constantly be working? Any free time that I actually get to myself, I would like to spend it relaxing if I'm able to. Well, that's just too bad then, isn't it? If your stupid jobs are more important to you than helping out your family, then you need to learn to prioritize properly. I won't let you skip out on your chores. Or are you really that incompetent that you can't actually manage your time properly? But I don't have time to do all of the house chores and get to my work in time. I need both of my jobs in order to earn the money I do so that I can hopefully move out soon. I mean, you don't want me living with you forever, do you? Of course I don't. But I also want you to do all of the chores. So you're just going to have to figure something out, aren't you? With what time? I have literally no time to do all the housework between my other two jobs. Well, you're just going to have to make time. If you don't do all the chores in the house, then I'll make sure to come to both of your jobs and create such a scene that you get fired from them. I will then kick you out of my house and you will have to find your own way from there on out. Hang on a minute. You wouldn't actually leave me homeless and without my work, would you? That's what I just said, isn't it? But you can't do that. You're my mom. You're supposed to help me and encourage me to try and make a life for myself, not threaten me with homelessness. Well, tough. Those are my terms. Either you do the chores you're given or you leave my house. You don't pay anything towards it, so this is the way that you can earn your keep. I pay rent. You know I do. I give you like $300 a month towards rent and bills. Drew is the one who doesn't pay anything. She just lives here rent-free whilst taking up all of your money so that she can go out and buy the things she wants, like clothes and makeup and stuff. She doesn't work, so she literally just drains you of all of your money. Drew works. She works at the little corner shop down the street. No, she doesn't. She was fired from there like three months ago. She was stealing money from the till 
and she would take bottles of alcohol and bring them back home with her. She's lucky the place didn't press charges for the thefts. They had every right to. Instead, they fired her and made her pay back everything she owed them, which I have no clue how she is doing as, like I said, she's not working anywhere at the minute. Honestly, Carla, for you to come up with such a horrible lie about your sister, just to try and make yourself look better, is ridiculous. Drew would never steal from anyone. They probably fired her because they were jealous of her or something. She is very pretty. You know how people can get about things like that. I mean, just look at you. What do you mean, look at you? Well, you're so jealous of your sister that you're making up lies about her integrity and trying to put her in my bad books. That screams that you're insecure about her and that you're jealous of her. It's kind of pathetic, really. I'm not jealous of Lucy. Uh-huh, sure. And I'm guessing that you're also not envious that she doesn't have to work too many old jobs just to get by in life, huh? Look, you can keep trying to fool yourself if you want, but you're not fooling me. Anyway, like I said before, if you want to continue living in my house, then you need to do all the chores that I tell you to do. Got it? Fine, but it's only because I literally have nowhere else to go at the minute. The minute I'm able to leave, then I will, and I definitely won't be coming back. Sounds great to me. However, whilst you are still living under my roof, you need to get Drew's things and tidy her room. Also, the dishwasher needs doing. There is a load of laundry that still needs washing, and you need to hoover the entire house. Because I think it's feeling a little dirty. I want that all done by tonight. That's a load of things. I won't be able to do all of that before my shift starts. Well, that's not my problem. If you can't get it done before work, you'll just have to do it once you've finished, regardless of how late it is. You know what? Fine, I'll get it done. But just know that you can't push me around forever. You'll regret this soon. Keep it up with an attitude like that and I'll find you a lot more chores to do. Whatever. Carla, where are you? You need to manage the dishes and do the shopping for your sister. Don't waste time. Be quick. I'm done with this. Huh? What do you mean? I mean that I am no longer going to hang around and let you bully me like you and Drew have been doing for pretty much my entire life. I am not okay with how you are treating me, and I am not going to let it go on for any longer. And what are you going to do about it, huh? You've got nowhere else to go. Haven't I? What? No? You haven't? You said so yourself. Yeah, that was before I finished getting my college degree. Now that I've done that, I am finally able to move out. Hang on. College? You never went to college. We never had the money for it. No, we didn't have the money to send me to college. Which is why I came up with a plan with the dean of the local community college. In exchange for free lessons, I worked as the school's janitor, doing all of the cleaning and tidying. It was incredibly difficult and tiring work, but I was willing to do it as it meant that I was getting a higher education, which would help me out in the long run. But you can't do that. I never said that you could. I don't care what you have or haven't said. There was no way that I wasn't going to do that work in exchange for lessons. Because of that deal that I made, I've actually been able to finish my degree in business, and I've even invented my own product. I've started my own online company, and it's starting to really take off. But that's not fair. Besides, even if you have done that, there's no way that you can move out. You still need to live somewhere, so you still have to follow my rules. Not true, actually. What? I've already moved out. Huh? I've already packed all of my stuff up, and I've moved into my new home. I got to know one of the girls really well on the course, and so we decided to rent an apartment together after we finished uni. The only reason I didn't do this sooner is because I was trying to save as much money as possible by living at home during college. But now I can finally move out and be happy. Hang on. You can't just move out like that. You never told me you were going. Also, who's going to do all of the house chores now? This is just unfair. No. What's unfair is you thinking that you can boss me around and get me to do all of your chores and treat me like a cheap maid. Well, the joke's on you now, because I'm gone. 
I've got my degree and I've moved out. And like I told you before, I'm never coming back. I don't deserve any of the rubbish that you've put me through, and I'm going to make sure that I never have to deal with you again. But, but you can't do that. I am your mother. You have to have contact with me. You have to do what I say. No, actually, I don't. I'm an adult, so I can make my own decisions, including who I want in my life and who I don't want in it. And not so surprisingly, you're one of the people I really don't want in my life. You and Drew. You're both horrible people. I mean, to treat me in such a way that you make me feel worthless? I'm your daughter and you treated me like a maid. I didn't see you doing the same to Drew either. She gets away with everything and you don't care. And yet you treat me like rubbish. Well, not anymore. I'm gone. And I'm not telling you where and after this, I'm never contacting you again. Hang on, surely we could talk about this. No. You had every chance to talk to me and treat me like an actual daughter, and you chose not to. I'm not hanging around just for you to try and steal all of my money and continue to treat me in such an awful way. Goodbye, Wendy. Please don't message me again, as I won't respond. Carla, I am your mother. Listen to me now. Carla? Just like I said, I cut all contact with my mom and Drew after that message. I moved in with my friend, which I am absolutely loving, and focused on getting my online business fully functional and operational. It's really kicked off, and I'm doing brilliantly. My salary has recently gone up as well, meaning that I no longer have to work my two jobs in order to afford to live. I seriously can't wait to see how my life is going to go from here on out, and whilst I might not have my family anymore, I know that I'm able to meet new people and make a new family. One that I can choose and who will treat me right. The last I heard about my mom and Drew, the two had a massive falling out. Mom quickly came to realize that she couldn't afford the rent and bills herself. As I had moved out and stopped paying my $200 rent, and she asked Drew to chip in. Of course, Drew refused, and the two ended up arguing before Mom kicked Drew out of the house. Not long after that, though, Mom also lost the house as she couldn't afford the rent any longer. Sometimes, karma is the best revenge in life. 